Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Good morning. We'll just wait for uh, just 30 seconds or so to let people get on um, on this bright, sunny Saturday okay, morning. Good morning, morning everyone. Welcome. Good morning. Okay, hey, welcome um, to our Creating Writing Live. Um, we're going to be covering the topic Show Not Tell this morning. Um, my name's Nicola Mitchell uh, and I run MC Home Tutoring and I'm an admin on this wonderful group, which is the 11 Plus Journey run by Saba. And thank you very much to Saba for allowing us the opportunity to come on screen um, and share a little bit of our knowledge with you. And hopefully it will help um, with your child's creative writing or with your creative writing, depending on who's listening this morning. Um, over to you, Caroline. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name's Caroline and I run Bright Prospects Tutoring. And uh, yes, Nicola and I work together to help you and your child develop their English. We're really looking forward to showing you these different aspects of grammar, writing, vocabulary and um, we hope that it will make a big difference to your child's understanding and use of different creative language. And thank you Saba for letting us do this live for everyone today. Lovely, let's get started. It's not a very long session today, but hopefully it will be a, a helpful session for you. Um, if you do have any questions, please go ahead and write them in the comments. Caroline's managing that for us today. She does that so well. So um, why ruin a good thing? We'll just let her carry on with that. Um, so let's get cracking. So show not tell, or even better, we like to call it snot for short. <laughs> um, just a little acronym there to help you when you're writing your shopping list for writing, just to write that down so you remember that you want to focus on how a character is feeling rather than explicitly telling your reader what a character is feeling or what their thoughts are or what their emotions are. Um, and this can be shown through actions, senses, thoughts, emotions, and speech. So show, not tell how someone is feeling. Show, not tell what the atmosphere is like. Um, why is it useful? So, yeah, why do we do any of what we do? And it's always good to discuss with your child what the purpose of what they're doing is, because sometimes they can say, well, why are we doing this? What's the point of it? And, and here, here are the, a few points for you. So it's great for comprehension exercises where you need to be able to infer. Caroline, would you agree? Yes, I think, um, you know, the, the best writing that I have ever read has been when, it, it, it kind of gives you a clue to what the character is feeling. And actually, <clears throat> excuse me, if you are reading, for example, a detective story, it's like being a detective, isn't it? You, you will not necessarily know, not all the characters are sort of as they appear when you read them, but there might be some little clues that the writer gives you the way that the character is acting in the story. So I'm reading a detective story at the moment and I'm thinking, mm, this, this is all a bit too easy for the detective. So actually, once you start to really deeply understand this as a writer and a reader, you'll start to pick up clues within other areas of reading and other things that I think you're going to talk about now. Absolutely, absolutely. And we know we do get a lot of questions in comprehension on inference. And sometimes it's about how do you know? What do you think the character is feeling? How do you know that they were feeling like this? So this is a great opportunity to not only think about it in your writing, but think about how you can apply it to your comprehension. Um, so yes, use it in your creative writing. Give the reader a hint as to what's to come or to evoke their feelings. If we see reactions in characters, we can kind of put ourselves into their shoes. We can think about why they might be feeling like this. And we can also give us an idea about how they might react or interact with another character. So that's a really good opportunity as well to use it. Um, next one, real life. Always good to try and think about anything that you do in this journey. How can I apply it in real life? And I always say to my students, the skills that you learn through this process are not just about this exam. They will take you through your life. 
Um, so in real life, it helps to read facial or bodily clues to understand how someone is feeling. They might not always be able to express themselves using words. So sometimes we have to use the clues in their face or the way that they're behaving to try and figure out how they're feeling. And that's really important when you're interacting with people because yes. our interaction with people is really important, isn't it, Caroline? Yeah, I, actually, I was thinking about this yesterday. I saw a friend of mine and um, I could see she wasn't very happy and she didn't say to me, I'm not happy, but I could see from the way she was behaving that she was sort of hanging around a bit, she was meant to go. And I said, oh, is everything okay? Is there something else you want to talk about? So I was reading her bodily clues and then I asked her and then she said some things to me. I was oh, right. So actually also this helps with your human interaction. It helps with your friendships in the future. And actually life isn't all about, you know, getting good grades. It's about building good relationships, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. you can see I'm liking I'm liking your comments. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK. And in real life, again, you develop your ability to empathize by seeing without being told how someone feels. Um, and as a youngster, it's very difficult to know. And children like to say exactly what they're thinking out of the mouths of babes, as they say, um, without having a thought for how their words might impact someone else. So reading a face, reading interactions without being told what's happening really helps in your life skills as well. So don't just think of this as, oh, I can use this in my creative writing tomorrow or later today or for this exam. No, there's so many more reasons why we need to pay attention to things like this. Top tip for parents really as well, sorry, don't want to go labor the point too much, but really look for opportunities throughout life where you can develop your child's um, ability to empathize with people. So what do they're watching on television? How can you um, let them know what people are thinking? When you're reading a book with them, probe them, question them. How do you know that they're feeling angry or what do you think they're feeling? Things like that. And a little bit of homework for you. If you haven't already watched the film Inside Out, I would highly recommend it. It is steeped in examples of show not tell. So I would definitely recommend the film Inside Out. It's a Pixar film, I think. So suitable for all the family, great one to sit down and share. Lots of laughs, absolutely love it. So I would highly recommend that. Brilliant, thank you very much. Fantastic. Caroline. Okay, so to start off our journey today on show not tell, we are otherwise known as snot. We are going to look at um, a few examples. So have a look at these three emojis. You'll find this at the top of your worksheet, which um, you can download from the group. And you can match, can you match these three feelings, tired, happy, and embarrassed to the three sentences that are below? Now, it would also be very useful for you to underline any particular words in each of those sentences that has helped you to work out why you've chosen one of the different emotions. So I'm going to read them. And yes, apart from matching them by dragging, uh, drawing a line, also underline the keywords. So we've got as, a, as red as a ripe tomato, he covered his flushed face with his fingers. Listlessly, the puppy dragged its paws along the kitchen floor after its long walk. And leaping up and down, she began to clap her hands, yelling, I did it. So which of those sentences matches which emotion of tired, happy or embarrassed? And I've used this myself with uh, creative writing lessons and yeah, the students really like them. Obviously, who doesn't like an emoji, right? <laughs> this is this really is show not tell in action, isn't it? Absolutely. Without the words. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so Nicola, what's what do you should we give people a few seconds to have a look at this? Yeah, hopefully they've downloaded this, the worksheet. Everything's there for them. If you haven't, it's on the screen, maybe just on a piece of paper or a whiteboard. And apologies, there's a little um proofreading error there. I've just spotted um and Caroline spotted as well. So apologies for that. We've put an extra A in. Um Okay, yep. Have you got anything coming back on the comments, Caroline? We have it at the moment. Ed. We have quite a few people watching live, which is brilliant. Welcome if you've just joined us. Wonderful. Get involved. Do let us know on the comments what you think or if you've got any questions. And please do feedback on the 
on the starter as well. So we've got tired, happy and embarrassed. So what kind of things do people show and not tell us when they're embarrassed, happy or tired? So just another 10 seconds or so on that. Okay. Okay, so what's the answers then, Nicola? <clears throat> okay, so tired. So tired, we've got listlessly, the puppy dragged its paws along the kitchen floor. So drag shows us how, shows us how he's moving. And then also we've got after its long walk. I don't know about you, but I recently did a, a very long walk, 13 and a half miles, and I was quite dragging my feet after that, I have to say. And a bit listless, I'm sure. Yeah. Yes, I was rather. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the next one. Happy, we have leaping up and down. She began to clap her hands, yelling, I did it. Um, sometimes if you're happy for someone else, you might clap your hands, mightn't you? And the words that showed us that were leaping up and down and clap her hands and I did it. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely done some of those things before when I've been very happy after, after that walk. <laughs> okay, and finally, embarrassed. As red as a ripe tomato, he covered his flushed face with his fingers and the words that helped me to figure out that that was showing embarrassment were as red as a ripe tomato. Yes, that's definitely happened to me before. Um, covered his flushed face with his fingers. Yes. Thank you, Nicola. Okay. Fantastic. So the next thing we're going to talk about is um, turning telling sentences into showing sentences. So what does that mean exactly? So we have sentences which are quite clear and explicit on what feeling they're trying to convey. So things um, that might tell you that somebody was, he was angry, he was sad, he was happy. Now, do they do much for the reader? Yes, of course, they give them information, but they don't, they're lifeless and they're dull. And we need to give the reader a chance to immerse themselves in either a book or reading what you've written. And sometimes readers don't want to be told. They want to try and figure out, to deduce or conclude what's happened. So telling sentences say it, and a showing sentence, rather than directly saying it, will infer, which allows you to deduce or conclude something for it. Now you might read clues and you might not be quite clear, but hopefully actions as you're going forward will make it much clearer for you. So it gets you to think. If somebody's telling you all the time what's going on, it doesn't give you a chance really to get involved in the action. And you know, reading is about immersion. It is about escapism. It is about taking you somewhere else. It's about kind of giving you the chance to think, what would I do in that situation? Oh, I'd love to be that hero. Or I know that I could, you know, this is what I would do in this situation. So telling sentences tell us explicitly showing sentences we will use action dialogue or the five senses so we're going to give you an opportunity now to do that yourself so let's go through an example so a telling sentence and a showing sentence he was angry quite clear Ang anger anger we all know what that looks like we all know what anger is tell it telling us that they're angry so how could we show anger instead Bulging eyes peered out from his scarlet face. By his side, clenched fists began to form. So what words in there, rather than telling you he was angry, show you that he was angry? The bulging eyes, maybe. We start to get like that. We start to get a little breathless. Our face might become a little flushed. So a scarlet face shows red. And then clenched fists also show that somebody's building up to something. So that's a good showing sentence. Nowhere in there was it mentioned that he was angry but what it did do on so many in so many ways is say that he was angry by showing it so that's really really important to do so you have got two sentences that you're going to have a go at now um the first telling sentence would be the house was haunted now it's not always about characters show not tell is it caroline no indeed um Actually, it, you know, sometimes it's it's more about getting the atmosphere. Uh, absolutely. So it's not just about telling a character as well. Then we've got another one here as well. The drink was disgusting. So 
taste is a good thing to show and not tell as well. We don't need to always say the drink was disgusting, the pizza was delicious, whatever it might be. There's other ways of explaining how um, something is without telling us how something is. So we're going to give you just a minute or so um, to write a sentence of your own. Um, if you're watching this back later, you can just pause it. If you're watching a recording of this, just pause it at this point and then you can have a go at writing the sentences down. So we'll just give you a minute or so. And please do share your showing sentences in the comments if you'd like, because it's lovely for everybody to get the opportunity to look at what you think a showing sentence is. Um, and, and looking at examples of good writing is, is a really good way of just um, exposing yourself to um, um, show not tell any other bits of creative writing as well that can be brought into there um, you know we've got some very interesting punctuation in the first sentence that we just looked at try and where you can be more creative and not just by using your words punctuation is so important as well particularly when you're using a showing sentence because it can just emphasize what you're trying to say um, and we know the examiners love a variety of punctuation so where you can try and do that too Okay, brilliant. Oh, we've got some a really good one from Dinendra. Um, she says, for the first sentence, the house was haunted. She says, cobwebs hung in the darkness. Bats flew while wolves howled. Ooh, Ooh I'm scared already, Dinendra. Um, that is a perfect example. I'm, I'm a bit of a don't know what the word is a pedant when it comes to punctuation I really like a semicolon so could you have used a semicolon in there to separate those two sentences and straight away you've up leveled your sentence but I absolutely love that thank you then we've got SK I I don't know if I'm saying your name right but if I'm not please excuse me I've got, I love this Ivy crawled around the house all the windows were closed Oh, I love that ivy mm -hmm. crawled. I have lots of ivy in my garden. It literally does crawl. Cool. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, where did that appear from? Anyway, beautiful, beautiful imagery and a bit of personification in there as well. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone else here, Anusha, the door creaked as it opened. And when you walked, you felt shivers down your spine. Oh, I think we could write a, um, you know, a, a ghost story after this. It's fantastic, isn't it? Excellent. And then we've got um, the house was pitch black with cobwebs from Bongi. Well done. I, I love that. Lovely. Beautiful imagery. Thank you very much. Well done, everyone. Let's move on. What about the drink was disgusting? Is any, can anybody go on to that one or is everyone <laughs> loving the horse, the house being haunted? <laughs> Arif has got the house was full of abundant stuff. Wolves howled. I heard a door creek i think you mean now if yep that's good so we could we could say something like the house was um full of hmm, abundant 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 with, abundant with something yeah abundant oh. with howling wolves howling or something like that so abundant means like full of lots of it and I heard a door, a door creak as I crept in. That would be really good, Arif. Or even adding an adverb there to creak, just to build up the suspense even more. You know, is yes. creaking normally implies slow, but could we add an adverb in there as well? Yeah, good one. Arif, have a think about what Nicola just said, if you've got a good adverb to add to your sentence. Uma, we've got, thank you though. This is this is great. I've entered and the creep. Creeping noise gave me goosebumps everywhere. Yes, that's really good. Showing not tell goosebumps. I love that. Brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what about the drink was disgusting? Do we have anything for that one? That's a, that's a tricky one. It is. And we're going to go on to that one in a minute. We are. We? we don't always focus on food and how it tastes by showing not telling either, do we? Because we generally just say, oh, that was delicious. Oh, that was disgusting. So let's have a look at a few examples. So this is one that we came up with. The dilapidated house stood and stared intently across the sleeping town. From within came mysterious shuffling and breathing noises. So that's also so. The wonderful sentences we've had already, just to add that to it as well. And the drink was disgusting. How do we show that a drink is disgusting? Suddenly she spat out the bitter lemonade. 
lovely um, dash there. It tasted like a toxic potion. Mm. Oh, we've got a couple more now. Thank you for the people who just put in the um, disgusting sentences. Anusha has written, the drink was a grim grey. Oh, I love that. <laughs> just by looking at it, it made you puke. Oh, <laughs> no thanks. I don't want to be trying any of your drinks, Anusha. And then we've got um, Neha, we've got, I put my lips against the glass. Suddenly, my face turned green. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my goodness. So just with the lips being against the glass, the aroma was enough? Is that what we to infer here? Oh, my goodness. That is gross. That is <laughs> You've done better than us, I think, on this occasion. Wonderful. Yes. Don't, remember, when you're doing your planning for a story, write a little um, reminder for yourself. S-N-O-T in the top corner so you know that you're going to take every opportunity where you can to show not tell there's nothing wrong though with just telling it there's absolutely nothing wrong with that either so a good mixture of both would really be a good recipe to success if you ask me yes yes I agree and actually if you um I've just been thinking about rhythmic writing and how you have long short medium length sentences and um, actually, that's kind of, you know, you could have yeah. bulging eyes peered out from his scarlet face by his side clenched fist began, began to form. He was angry. He was extremely angry. And so, yeah. yes, actually, you have told the person, but you haven't only told them. Yeah. You know, you're extending that idea and you're building tension within your writing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when she spat out the bit of lemonade... Who's she with? How do they react to that? You know, those kind of things as well. So it leads us into lots of different things. This is great. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's wonderful. As I had a sip of the juice, it felt like toxic waste. It tasted like, to oh, my goodness. These are brilliant, aren't they, Caroline? Fantastic. Absolutely. Fantastic. Um, OK, shall we move on? Yeah, let's move yeah. on. OK, so we've just put together, we've got a little text here. Um, to give you a chance just to pick out emotions and get a sense of atmosphere in this text. So just take a minute or so to read it through and then underline the words or phrases that show, not tell you, the emotion or atmosphere that you think is trying to be depicted here or shown here or described here. So just take a, a few seconds just to read through. Um, I'm going to read it so that we can... Um, while you work, so that will just help you think as well. We stood huddled together on the edge of the docks as the occasional drops of rain started to fall from the dark, metallic clouds above us. I gripped my mother's hand tightly and watched as the turning tide slowly took the fishing boat away from the safety of the land. All around me, the women were gently dabbing their red eyes. A lump was building up in my throat. Although I tried to swallow it away, the feeling only got worse. I buried my head in my mother's coat, my unwanted tears streaming from my eyes. So what emotional atmosphere is being shown in this text, do you think? We can have a mixture of emotions. Are there things that are being written there that actually help you reflect? Do they reflect the emotions in the text? Are there things that have been said that show you what you might be thinking as well in other ways. So just have a, have a go at doing that. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go, let's go for it. Let's go for it. So huddled, what does huddled infer? When people are huddled together, they're, 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 they've got something to share, haven't they? They're bringing something together, they're hugging, They've got a shared um, interest. So we're huddled together. We might be talking. We might be hugging. Um, dark metallic clouds above us. So now we've got not only the huddling where they're bringing together, we've got a description of dark metallic clouds as well. So we've got some great adjectives there that are maybe adding to the sense of mood and atmosphere here. Gripping somebody's hand. What does that infer? And turning tide slowly took the fishing boat away turning tide is that turning for the better is that turning for the worst safety of the land so the land is safe what does that infer that the sea or wherever they're heading out to is not so safe 
Is this why maybe she's gripping her mother's hand? Dabbing their red eyes. What does that imply? What happens to make your eyes red? Normally when somebody's crying, their eyes become red. A lump. When have you had a lump building in your throat before? When, you, when maybe you want to cry and you've tried to stop yourself from crying? Maybe when the nerves are building up? Um, the feeling only got worse. I buried my head in my mother's coat. Unwanted tears streaming from my eyes. So what's this character trying to show? What's this character feeling? What's happening in this, um, this scene here? And what atmosphere? So what words could you share on the chat? What emotional atmosphere you feel is being depicted here? So there's some words and phrases that I've highlighted for, for you. But what do you think might be shown here? What feelings? So focus on the feelings. We've got the words and phrases now. Sorry, Caroline. That's okay. We've we've got um people have written sadness. Fantastic. Which I think I would agree that's probably the overwhelming emotion in this, isn't it? The main one. Somebody else has written scared. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. I hadn't thought of that. Yes, if you bury your head in somebody who you love, like your mum or your somebody else, maybe if you're married, your husband, you know, you might be like, oh, you might be feeling a bit upset. You might and be the, depressed. Yeah. Yeah. The gripping of the hand tightly as well. You know, that's for security, isn't it? We, we grip somebody's hand because we want to rely on them to keep us safe really as well. Or we're a bit nervous. Um, so fantastic. Brilliant. So sadness. From one, very good. Well done. Thank you very much. So here is yes. a few words. Um, that you might have written or thought of. So sadness, fear, dread, nervousness, bravery, that lump in her throat. She's trying to swallow it down. The unwanted tears, she's trying to be stoic and not show that she's feeling it. I think she's trying to be brave for her mum, actually, because the women were gently dabbing their red eyes. The fishing boat, their, their husbands, their fathers are going off and they may never return if something happens if the weather takes a turn for the worst danger um, and distress and so, somebody very good I mean somebody has um also written here grief mm, Rina. Yeah, yeah grief is a it does maybe something has happened to those people on the on the fishing boats as you said in the, well in the past maybe something's happened so every time they go out yes yes and a moment and also someone else has written it's cold and actually yes that dark metallic clouds metal is cold isn't it good one i like that well done yeah. um, and the weather isn't it the yeah. rain as well that adds to this reflects it's a bit of pathetic fallacy i think you'd call that where yeah. they add the, the, the weather adds to the feelings of the people as well so it's almost being um personified there Brilliant. Well done. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. And it's so nice to see you interacting with your learning. That's really going to make an enormous difference. Um, just get involved. Just get involved. It's brilliant. Thank you very much. Right. OK. And what I like about this group and doing a lesson like this is that we all help each other. We've all got different ideas. We've got a slightly different perspective on things. And this is why Nicola and I really like to work together. I was thinking about it earlier today before we started that we see things in a different way. And you know, um, the whole, the acronym of team together, everyone achieves more. And that really is true, isn't it? Love it. Love it. That's okay. Great. Brilliant. Okay. So let, now we're going to move on. We've looked at show, not tell within sentences um, as a whole. And now we're going to be breaking down the different parts of sentences to help us um, use some of these techniques in our own writing. So have a look at the next part of the, the worksheet and this slide. Here are some examples of different word classes, adverbs, in verb starters and literary devices. We've got similes and there's three different um, atmospheres or emotions shown at the top of the table. Spooky, deliciousness, it's a taste and curious for a character. And you'll see that three of the phrases have already been put in that match those feelings, those emotions or atmospheres or tastes and the word class. So for adverb, we've got tentatively. That's how a curious character might um, react or do an action. For deliciousness, the ing verb is licking her lips with glee, shows that she finds something delicious. And a simile, 
spooky as black as ink. And now it's up to you to write in, in the table the other examples in black into the correct place. So we've got light shining sapphires, tantalizingly, eerily, widening his eyes, creaking and moaning, as eager as a beaver. <laughs> Have a go and see if you can put those phrases into the correct part of the table to match both the word class, literary device, or atmosphere, taste, or character feelings. I don't think she would be licking her lips with glee if she was drinking the drink from the previous slide, would she? So that's definitely shows not tell that she yes. is about to eat something very delicious rather than very... That's right. Oh, gosh, we've got some people putting some stuff in. Actually, there is one here that could be used for two of them. You could argue. One of the ing verbs. Okay. So somebody has written, like shining sapphires is a simile. Yes, you are right. How do we know that, actually? How do we know that light shining sapphires is a simile? So because we have the word light when you're when you're comparing something to someone else because of what, uh, something else because of what it looks like or sounds like or feels like one of the five senses. And also we've got as something as helps us, doesn't it? So creaking and moaning means the person is in an eerie position yep creaking and moaning um means that is kind of a, a scary yeah. sound yes yeah, yeah that's our spooky isn't it very good so the eerie yep very good well, well done. done okay all oh, lots of people com commenting delicious tantalizingly awesome. well done sk gill yes because it has light light. Light. well done very good everybody You've, everybody's answers are excellent let's go through the answers then Feel free to fill it in if you haven't um, already. So deliciousness, we have the simile of like shining sapphires. Which could refer to some sort of food or something. Yes, yeah, something that I'm about to have for my breakfast after this, in fact. <laughs> Can't wait. I wonder what that could be. Mm. Um, okay, and then we have tantalizingly. If, you, if something tantalizes you, it's kind of like it tempts you. And it wants you to have more of it, whatever it is. OK, and then we have next um, eerily is the adverb for spooky. There we go. And as many people said, creaking and moaning, well done, um, are the ing verb starters. Very, I love starting a sentence with an ing verb. Yes, absolutely. Right straight into the action. Um, and yeah. that, that takes you, doesn't it? That's fantastic. And we have widening his eyes and eager as a beaver for the simile for curious. Now, the one that I said, Nicola, maybe mm. could argue that widening his eyes could also be an ing verb for spooky because you might uh, widen your eyes if uh, you're like, oh, what's this in front of me? So yep. actually, you could have argued that. We would have accepted that. And even um, tentatively, as an adverb for spooky, Yes, yes, so that's true. You know, if, if you're going into the haunted house from our previous slide as well, you might tentatively enter. So that shows that you're not going in completely bravely, but you will go ahead, but you're going to do it very cautiously. So well done. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank yes, you very much for sharing. Yeah, and thank you, everyone. Lots of, we've got lots of interaction on this. This is brilliant. Well done. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to move on now. It's really important that when you are writing, you're using some of this higher level language in your actual work. So what we've done is we've got these nine different words and phrases for the atmosphere, taste and character. And we would like you to now try and match them with possible endings. Now, there are more then um, there is more than one possibility for each of these. So I recommend you look at the top of the table, spooky, deliciousness and curious. 
take one of those um, words or phrases and think, does it still reflect spooky deliciousness or curious when you add the green phrase? So, for example, eerily, the forest beckoned them deeper. And you could just put a number one in your table so you're not writing out the whole phrase again. It would be weird if it said eerily, blueberries lay in the bowl. I hope not. That would be a bit strange. So you can see that blueberries lying in a bowl doesn't really sound like a spooky atmosphere, does it? No. Um, and also uh, eerily. Night. Let's give, yeah, let's not give too much away, Caroline. But I'm being too there's, nice, definitely, there's definitely more than one option there where eerily would work beautifully. And you notice that all of our openers are followed by a comma mm. before we lead in to what we're about to say. So make sure that you're paying attention to that punctuation as well. So if you've got that opening phrase, which is a show not tell, just pop a comma after it um, as well before you go in. So wonderful. Let's see what you've come up with. So do you share? As, as you're typing in your answers, I'm just going to read the green phrases to you. Yep. Okay, so we've got the forest beckoned them deeper, blueberries lay in the bowl, he raised his head, desperate to be chosen. She pushed the door to see what lay beyond. The wind howled. She grabbed the donut. Night fell. Please do go ahead and put in your answers if you think you've worked out what some of these might be. The aroma of freshly baked pizza wafted into the street below. Mm, that sounds mm. nice. He opened the spell book, hoping to discover its secrets. I actually could eat pizza for breakfast, I have to say. <laughs> what about some, you? Some people do. Some <laughs> people do. My, son, my sons wouldn't say no to a bit of pizza for breakfast, I have to say. Um, just beckoned, um, is, it means called in, called in, so called over. So beckoned is, is, is that. And wafted is like sort of... If you imagine a smell um, in the air kind of coming towards you lightly in the breeze, in the wind. Lovely. And it's usually a nice smell, but not necessarily. <laughs> I'm starting to get a bit hungry, actually, Carol. <laughs> Lovely. Eerily, the forest beckoned them deeper. Yes. Good. Thank you. Really good. Eight deliciousness. Let's see if we agree. Yes. So you could say tantalizingly, the aroma of freshly baked pizza wafted that that one. Yeah. But um, actually, that's the uh, that is the only one that would really work with that because you can say licking her lips with glee, the aroma of pizza. Well, maybe you could actually. That one would work. Poss possibly, possibly. Definitely not like shining sapphires because no, if, because I, if I had a pizza that was like a shining sapphire, I probably wouldn't want to eat it at all. <laughs> actually. <laughs> I think your blueberries that you're about to have for breakfast, Caroline. Yes. Might look like shining sapphires. I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we've got eerily the wind howled. Beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. That's, that's, a so that, that's a lovely sort of short sentence, isn't it? If we're thinking about the rhythm of our writing. Yes, curious for he opened the spell book. So which one would it be? Tentatively widening his eyes, his eager as beaver. Which one of those curiousness would, would you use there? Um, so well done. That's lovely. Yes, exactly. So it's good. You've identified the right um, the right emo or feeling, emotion for your showing. Uh, but you need to try now and use some of those high level words to match them up because actually each one of these does match with a particular phrase from the green endings. Fantastic. It's really good, well done. Okay, so if, um, if you haven't had time to finish all of those in this session, then do go back and have a look um, and, sit and, and have a go at matching the rest of them. Yeah, and then, you know, an extra challenge there as well, Caroline, that we've just added. Yes. Is write your own endings for these sentence starters. You've got some great sentence starters there, which actually can be used across a whole range of feelings um, and emotions and atmospheres. See if you can write your own sentence starters. Have a go now. 
after this session is finished and when you next do your piece of writing thinking oh how can I use show not tell and remember don't just focus on a character focus on what's going on around them focus on how something tastes there's so many different ways of, of using show not tell in your writing um, and it will have an amazing effect on your reader um, and look for clues as well in all areas of, of your lives as we were saying earlier where show not tell is is shown um, because it will help you not just with your writing, but in so many different areas. Brilliant. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. Thank That's you. actually, we wanted to keep this session quite short and sweet. Um, thank you so much for your interaction. Um, Caroline and I um, are so thankful to Sabah for allowing us this opportunity. And we do like to be able to just share some of our expertise as well. We know what it's like for parents. We deal with them on a regular basis and we know the strifes and struggles you have going through this journey. We take our hats off to you. Um, you know, we, we work very closely with our parents. Um, it's very much a team effort between the child, the parent and um, the tutor or however you choose to do it. You might be doing this journey yourself. So this is why we wanted to come on really and give you a little bit of support and help. Um, we are running some courses over the summer. Um, I've got one in comprehension techniques for the 11 plus so year five and I've also got one for year four as well getting ready for year five really which is really where the pressure steps up and then we've got 11 plus verbal reasoning so these are like the final countdown last minute steps to what I do to be successful in this exam and then an introduction to verbal reasoning so let's hit the ground running for year four or year five and get them ready for their verbal reasoning aspects of the exams if you are taking them uh, Caroline Yes, um, I'm also going to be offering three different courses during the holidays, year three and four, um, just starting off with your creative writing and our, our courses uh, for three days in um, August and September. And then I've also got my years five and six creative writing. That's when we're writing a story um, quite sort of slowly in depth, really working on your language, your grammar, sentence structure, punctuation. That's for an hour a day for five days for two different weeks in the holidays. And finally, creative writing exam skills and strategies. Those are for uh, that course is for children who are about to enter year six and um, it will give you an opportunity to do a mock from a given title or picture. Uh, different sorts of strategies and how to plan for your work. And then we're going to go through at the end of the session and really analyze, edit our work together. I'll pick out different areas that students need to work on to improve and really impress the examiners on the day. So hopefully one of those could help your child really shine. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you again to Saba. And um, please do reach out if you have any questions. We're happy to answer them. You know, we dip in and out of the um, um, page all the time. It's been, a, as I've said before, a valuable resource for me. It's wonderful. I learn loads. I'm still learning. And Caroline's the same. You know, the teamwork really does help. So thank you very much for joining us um, and enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day.